Here's part two. Part two. It's exciting. Part two might be the better part. Welcome back, y'all. Maybe part one. I don't know. You let us know. You let Was us know. part one or part two better? Yeah. What can you relate to more? Yeah. You guys let us know down below in the comments. Share with your mom, friends. And just enjoy part two of this long conversation. I'm just going to lead off right where the, the part one ended. And we're just going to get right back into it. It's just such a long video that I had to cut it in half. So grab a coffee. Grab a soda. Sit yeah. down. Enjoy some mom talk for part take two. Take a deep breath. Right. Take this round back. Take this wild ride with us. <laughs> I tried to compose it. Postpartum depression puts you in a really dirty, dirty, scary place sometimes. Yeah, it can. That's like another thing I wanted to talk about is that all of the mom guilt and all of the, you know, expectations of being a mom. When you first have that baby, that first baby, and you just are a first time mom, it's a whirlwind. It's like literally like a oh, giant tidal wave crashes down on you because yeah. when you're pregnant, everyone's like tells you these little things like you oh, just wait, everyone you just thinks, wait, yeah. you know, or they're like, oh, it's gonna be so great. And you know, so you get like these mixed signals. You have moms telling you like, you know, buckle up and then Horror you have like, and yeah, and, and then you have like other people who are like, oh, it's gonna be the best time ever. So you're like, you you're don't just know excited. what to think, but yeah. you're so excited. And you're so of excited, course. and you're just like, you don't really realize what's about to happen. Like, you literally, like, I even, when she was pregnant, I told her, I was like, I have nothing I can really say to you, because you're just going to have to see it for yourself. Yeah. I was like, you, I, I can tell you all day, but it's going to be, it's, just wait. That's yeah. all I kept saying. I was like, just yep. wait, you'll know. Yeah, like, you'll, you'll see it. You'll see. It's a tidal wave. It's crazy, and on top of just having a baby... You have this like tidal wave of like all these expectations and then you have all these people telling you to breastfeed or to yeah. do this or to do that and you have to do this and you have to do that no and you have all these people. No co-sleeping. Yeah, no everything. Being, you know, all this stuff, okay? And then if you do one of those things, like I gave Ace a binky and it was the best thing ever for him. And then I didn't. But how dare you? Yeah, but how dare <laughs> I? And then with Charlie, I didn't, Charlie didn't want a binky. Yeah. And people were like, well, why don't you just give her a binky? It's like... Why, why aren't you helping her? Yeah, like, oh, you need to give her something to soothe. It's, it's like something. It's one or the other. Like, what the fuck? You know? You get and, shamed for one. Uh, yeah, and so it's like just all of this stuff piles on, piles on. I mean, I could just give like a... A few, million examples. A million examples. But there's just all of this stuff piles on you. And then instead of being able to sit down and think about it and process it and you know, find your mental health. Yeah. You can't. No. There's no sitting down and... There's no time. There's no time to, like, think about it or process emotions. You literally don't have time to do that. You don't have time to think. You don't have time to... About yourself, at least. Like, it's not about you anymore. It's about yeah. your baby. And that's how it should be. But yeah. it's not saying you have to find time for yourself, but... And you really should. If yeah. You're, if you're a first-time mom or you're a new mom... Save your sanity. S save your sanity. Try to, even if, like, if you have a significant other, if you have someone that can help you, say, can you please take the baby for an hour or two? People told me to do it's that. It's okay to do that. People told me to do that, and I didn't do it, and I regret it. Because, yeah. and now I'm getting better at it. Now I'm like, okay. I was that way, literally, up until, yeah. like, Aaliyah being nine months old. Yeah, and, and uh, me too. I mean, not even, like, it, Charlie, I'm just now, now that we moved to Billings, it took me that long, like two yeah. years, to really ask for help, and it, it's it, hard it really, to ask it, for help, yeah. even with a husband. Not, we're not single mothers, yeah. And it's still hard. To yeah, ask for I can't help. even imagine as a single mom. So, yeah. but it's just you. You really need to just be okay with letting someone take the baby. It'll be okay. You can be in the same house, just go in a different room. Literally, like, getting an hour away in an hour room away, just doing can save your sanity. Right, process a few things, think about a few Let things. Let tears out, cry scream, if you need to. laugh, do whatever it is. Yeah, call somebody that you haven't talked to in a while, just and do anything that doesn't involve the baby. Don't call somebody to talk about your baby. Yeah. Don't do that. You need to literally do something that doesn't have anything to do with the baby and do it for yourself. And it, it's really important to do that because no, I, I still don't, I have, I struggle to do that. Like what we're doing right now, like mm -hmm. this is our time to be away from our kids. We're talking in this video, we're talking about our kids. Yeah. 
but it's more than that. It's like you you need this time. Yeah. And to do it. And if you don't, like how I didn't do it and how you didn't do it, postpartum depression can really affect you. And oh, it swallows And they you tell whole. you, yeah, they tell you even when you, you're in that hospital. Yeah. They, they tell you, make sure to make time for yourself. Yeah. All the nurses, everyone is like, you know, let, get help. Make sure people help you. Mm -hmm. Like, don't, don't do it alone. You, you know, you have, just make sure someone helps you. If you're starting to feel stressed, let someone yep. help you. Yeah, and they, I never understood it. I never, no. I was like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I got this, you know, and it, you, you really want people to think that too. Yeah, and, but you, it's, yeah, I don't know how to explain it, like, I just fell into it so hard so fast, I didn't even realize it, yeah, I didn't realize it for a long time, and then it's, yeah, and then it's actually, my husband and I both sat down one night, and he was like, I think you might have postpartum depression, and I reached out to her, and I actually, I do go see a psychiatrist once a month, yeah. and, you know, and that's good, but it can swallow you whole and it really fucks with you and no one wants to talk about postpartum depression in women especially or even men i've never heard people talking about it in men neither and ever and it's like people are like how can men have postpartum depression they really really can and it can and it really can mess them up oh yeah like and you know that's my husband's story to tell i'm not going to like yeah. talk about that but it can happen and it and it affects so many women that it's unreal. Like, oh, yeah. And, and so hush-hush. I don't understand why people don't talk about it. It doesn't make any sense. It's like... Yeah, it's... And it's so hard to explain. Like, even sitting here... It is. Like, it's hard, it's to, hard to find the word. Your identity is... Your, you your feel single like, identity feels gone. Yeah, you don't feel like a human or you anymore. You're not you anymore. No. You're somebody's mom. And that's all you are. And it, it really can consume you and make you feel like that's all you are. And then you don't know who you are anymore. And your only purpose is this child. And that's it. And that's all you should do. And that's that's all that matters. And that's, sadly, that's how society and a lot of people make you feel. But it's not true. You can still care about yourself and you can still do things for yourself. And I'm still figuring it out, you guys. Like, I, oh, yeah. I'm still struggling with it. Like, this... What you're watching right now, this YouTube channel, has literally pulled me out so much. I, I've i been wanting to do it for a long Watched time. Watched it happen. Yeah. It's I've been, unreal. I've been wanting to do it for a long time, but I haven't had the strength to do it mentally. And then I finally decided to do it, and it helps so much. It's like an outlet for me, and like you with your painting. Yep. Like, it's you. I think that helps you so much. Like, she's oh, an yeah. amazing painter, and she paints Thank you. amazing um, canvases, and we actually have a funny story, and we should just change the subject for a second. She painted me this amazing <laughs> painting, and I went to pick it up from her. Um, when we were only lived an hour away, we met halfway, and she, I picked them up. <laughs> <laughs> and I pulled them out and set them on the trunk and showed them to you. Yep. And, and then I grabbed, I grabbed one. Yeah. Because I, I had two, I had two for you. That's Yeah, what and she put the other ones away, and then, like, I grabbed one, and I didn't grab the other one. Left, and it was on the back of her car, and she drove off, and then I realized I didn't have it. I had drove 45 minutes to my home on the highway, through a mountain pass, and made it home, and the one painting was stuck in the spoiler of my car, yeah. on the trunk, and the other one was... Long gone. Yeah, long gone. I made it all the way home, and people were looking at- I heard people honking at me, I was like, I'm not driving like a jerk. Yeah. People were honking at me, people were looking at me at stoplights. Yeah, I was like- And yeah. I had this beautiful painting sitting on the spoiler of my car. And the whole time, she didn't even notice. <laughs> no I didn't clue. notice until, like, I, like, I don't know, I think I got home. Yeah, you was, got home. I texted you, I was like, I don't have my painting, and you were and like- And I was like- well, there was one on my spoiler, so it probably is in a parking lot somewhere <laughs> on the highway. Oh my god, it's so funny. That was so off topic. If but... that painting got all the way home with me, yours could have fallen off at any point. Yeah. It could have made it almost all the way home. So yeah. Off like five minutes before. But so she made a beautiful painting for that me, was a and funny we, I didn't story. even get to keep it. I didn't even get to keep it. <laughs> it she, was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was, it was Montana, and yeah. it had everything in it. Oh, I loved it. I was going to get it tattooed on me. It is pretty. And I like mountains with the mountains sunset. Mountains and like a snow-capped mountain yeah. sunset. And I, that's what I want. I have Montana tattooed on my mm -hmm. side, which is the outline. And I want to get it filled. And I told her that, so she painted something for mm -hmm. me. I didn't even get it for like 10 minutes and, and it's gone. So yeah. 
You're gonna There's a photo of it somewhere. Yeah, you're going to have to repaint <laughs> it for me. Yeah, but. I can do that. Anyways, so that her, painting is her outlet. Yeah. Um, a lot. YouTube is my outlet and it helps a lot. It makes me just feel like more of a human. Yeah. I, and I know that sounds weird because I'm sitting here talking to a camera by myself, but like I just get to be me. And yeah, because you, you, it's an outlet. You're able to put something out there and get it off your chest. Yeah. Whatever it is, if it's makeup or clothes, we're talking about, like right now we are talking about being moms and talking about our children, but it is an outlet. And we've made a bunch of other videos while we've been here that didn't have to deal with our kids. Yeah. I mean, they're like the clothes one, you know? So it is good to find, because your children define you in a way when you become a mom. It, and, and they do. That's not just how it feels. They do. You are now their caretaker. You are their life source. And that becomes your identity. But you can also have your other things that define you as well right like i am you don't a mom, have to be just a mom but i am an artist and i am a wife and i am a best friend yeah and i enjoy all of those things separately and as one yeah i can be with jamie and not have to be with my child like right now she's in the other room with her father and we can enjoy our time together i don't have to you know Mom doesn't, mom comes first to me, yep. but all the other things can be just as important yep. and feel just as good. You don't have to have guilt for leaving the room for an hour to gather yourself. Yeah. I didn't start until I was, until my daughter was nine months old. My husband would come home from work and instantly grab her and I would go into her nursery where we had a rocking chair and my laptop and watch YouTube videos. Like, I didn't even have to do anything. I just would sit down for an hour or two and watch YouTube videos with my headphones in so I can't hear her crying. I know he has her. Yeah. I'm in the other room. If he needs me, he can get me. But just doing that... Helps. Yeah. I mean, the way that my mood changed and the way my marriage became so much better yep. from just getting a few hours to myself. It doesn't even have to be a few hours. It could be an hour, half an hour, whatever you're comfortable with. But, like, do something that can get your mind off of your baby or being a mother. Not that they don't have to matter because they do and they always will. Right. But finding something that can take your mind off that, that's okay. You don't have to feel guilty for not thinking about your children 24-7. It's yeah. okay yes. to go shopping and not think about your kids. Yes. It's okay to hang out with your friends. It's okay to go out and have a drink mm -hmm. once in a while and not think about your kids. You're not a bad mom for doing that. No. People are like, they see you out at a bar once and they're like, wow, is she never with her children? Right. And you're like, this is the first time I've gone out in a year and a half. Yeah. And it's, and it's like, it's okay for you to go out. If you want to go out once a month or more, do it. Because if you know deep down that your child is taken care of, your child is healthy and happy. And loved. And loved, then nothing, nothing else should matter. Yeah. If you are doing things the way that you feel is right, then do it. Yeah. You know, like your child being happy and healthy comes first. And then everything else, if it makes you happy, do it. Yeah, exactly. You and it doesn't it really there well. doesn't have to be the worry of other people judging you. It it'll be there and it's hard for me, it's easy for me to say that, but it's hard to take that in. Yeah, 100%. But like try next time you go to the store without your child, try to remind yourself that like this is good for me. Yeah. This will make me a better mother. Yeah. You have to find time for yourself. And for your children. Honestly, it really it is, is a full in the circle. End, it is. Go doing children. it for them too because a happy mom makes a happy kid. Yeah. And that's what I started to realize really badly was I was not happy. I was Oh yeah. I was in a slump. I was so depressed and I was so miserable even though I had both two healthy children and I was I got to stay at home and I you know all these things that everyone, you know, is supposed to be great. I couldn't handle it. Yeah. I and I had I just literally had to tell my husband like I think I need to go back to work. And that's, that's so good that you realize. Yeah, that. and then you know, that didn't even help that much um, when in the previous town I lived in because my job was horrendous mm -hmm. um, and the people were there were just awful. But um, I, uh, 
you know, even then, like, that kind of helped a little bit in the beginning, but then it just, I was still miserable, and I was like, I don't know what else to do, you know? So I just continued to be miserable forever, basically, until we moved here. And we have family here who is like, Jamie, stop let us take the kids that's good and it like it literally took jt's nana love you nana shout out to you if you're watching i love sweetest. you so much sweetest woman in the entire world oh my god <laughs> um she literally had to be like i got it like you're good it's okay and it it for like the first like month it was so hard i was like oh i was like no like it's okay i don't need your help i still do it i still text her oh, and i'm too. like I'm like, oh, uh, you know, I, just let me know, let me know if you if you don't want to watch them, like, it's okay, and like, you know, and she's always like, it's fine, uh, yep. like, you're good, go, <laughs> and, you know, and it's just, it, once I started to have someone who I could trust watch my kids, because I did not like the whole daycare thing, no, no, I did take them to daycare, and I'm not saying daycare is bad, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying, like, for me, for my anxiety, it was like, oh, I get it. it was yeah. horrible, but having, like, a support system, and having someone, like, take my kids and I know that they're safe and I'm okay. That is the best feeling. Yeah, it's helped so much. It's literally been like... You can breathe. I can breathe. It literally, it That's literally... It feels you can like, 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 I'm like just oh breathe my God. just now. It was like, it's such a good feeling. You feel like you can breathe yeah. and that you can think without things constantly bouncing back to the kids. Yeah. Because that's such a hard thing for me was... And this is sad. But I don't have anyone other than my husband in my town where I live. Like, I could trust you with Aaliyah. Yeah. You're a good mom. I, I trust you 100% and I could go do my own thing. But back home, I as sad as it is, like, I don't have anyone I could hand my child to other than my husband. Right. That that's I how we were in Livingston. Confident Until with. I moved here, I had literally no one. And that's so hard. But as sad as that sounds, like, it's so nice to know that I can hand my daughter to my... Because the first few months of her life, I didn't trust him, which is... No, that's I've normal. been with him, and I love him, and I trust him as a human and as a husband, but, like, I thought I'm the only one that could possibly know how to really take care of her, and no one else could know that, like, you know, if she does this, this is what she needs, you know? You just think, you're fine. And now that I can hand him to her and go take a nap and sleep, a deep sleep for a few hours. Yeah, like, I couldn't do that forever either. That took me a long time mm -hmm. to feel comfortable enough to go and have a deep sleep knowing my child is awake with someone else. Yeah, oh, I know. I, I used to tell you, I'm like, give her to Vince. And you were like, I can't. And I'm like, okay. Which is like, okay. And, like, yeah. and I would get it, but I'm like, you, you could. Yeah. You know, and you're like, oh, yeah, I know I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, but yeah. maybe I will. I'm like, yeah, this no. bitch ain't doing it. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like the first four or five months. I mean, like, it was a good chunk of time before I finally, like, just let him. And, and I woke up from a nap. I didn't sleep very well. And she was alive. Yeah. She was alive. Yeah. And, and I like, was like, okay, oh, okay. And you fed her? And sure, diapers clean? Okay. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? Like, not everything needs to be so uptight. Like, some things, like, kids don't have to, you know, they can fall down. Mm -hmm. They can scuff their knees up and they can, you know, hit their heads off things and it's gonna be okay. Yep. These things are all, it all ties back into the judgment and the, you know? Yeah. So it's. Yeah, because you have, you know, every and every mom's different, you know, there's moms yeah. who, like, their kids fall, and they're like, <gasps> and they, like, freak out and panic, and then there's other moms who are like, you're fine, you're fine, and, yeah. you know, everyone has their it's own always way. always everyone, yeah. Yeah, but it's different. It, however you want to do it, it's fine, either way, but it is okay if they fall, it, it's okay if you don't like that they fall, it's, it, everything is fine. That's yeah. what, another thing I wanted to touch on was, when I didn't have kids... I'm not going to lie, I, I, I did not want kids. I really didn't. Oh, I've I, never wanted a child. No, I was until like, I I, your you child. can a ask anyone who knew me before I had kids. Same. Before Literally. I went through all the things I went through, before I got locked up, and before I went to everything, I was not this person. I was like, it's me, me, me. Yep. Me, 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 okay? And I never having kids. I mean, I said, I had, I can't even count how many times I said that. I was oh, never having real. children. Ever. Yeah. And I, I didn't so much money on it. I didn't like kids. I was that girl that like if people had kids, 
I didn't know how to hold a baby. I literally like was like, I was uncomfortable Get holding this kid babies. Away from I, me. Like, oh, yeah, and I was didn't like babies. Kids I thought in they the were restaurant. Yeah, like I was. I oh, was I that. get it. I was yep. judgmental. Like if people were like kids were screaming in the store. I was like, like oh my god, like, shut that Spank kid your up. Kid. Yeah, and now I'm like, if I see a mom like I was at Walmart, and she had a newborn baby. I'm talking like had to have been like a day or two mm. old, tiny baby screaming at the top of its lungs and we're all at like the self-checkout lines like the long ones and uh you could tell she was just exhausted and she was just letting him cry because what else was she supposed to do oh at that point it's and it, she's just trying can't. to get out of there so and she was alone with a newborn baby screaming in his car seat and so she was just trying to check stuff out as fast as she could yeah and there was people all around being like looking at her and being, i hate god i, hate I got that. so I got, felt like I had to, like, protect this girl. I was getting so yeah. upset. Like, I looked at my husband, and I was like, I'm going to freak out. Like, I was so pissed. I, like, it could bring tears to my eyes. I felt so bad for this girl because I had other people over there standing there looking at her and being like, oh, my God. Like, she's not even, like, helping her baby. Like, like did you see the hour before where she's tried everything she could possibly yeah, do? Yeah, that's the thing. So I, like, was mean-mugging people. I was like... Don't you dare judge That's that mom. That's so sad. So I went over to her and I like, you know, I like tucked his like little blanket up a little bit. Like I didn't touch him or anything. I just, had a, but he had kicked it off. So I just like kind of like pressed it back into the thing and he like grabbed it right away. And I think that's like what he wanted, but yeah. And he kind of quieted down. And she like looked over and she was like, thank you. And like took a deep breath. And I was like, you're doing fine. Don't care what any of these other people Think, and she just like busted down crying oh my god and I was like it's I was like it's okay do you want a hug and I'm like a stranger you know obviously and she was like she's like no it's okay and I was like okay well just know you're doing great and you know fuck all these other people and she's like thanks I needed that and I like walked off but it's it's true like if you see a mom struggling or if their kids are screaming and they're acting like brats you don't realize what that mom's gone through before that you don't know that she's tried the discipline week. them or there could be something <laughs> more than you don't you don't know everyone's story you don't know maybe that child has something um a disability you don't know you literally don't know no you don't know what that mom's going through so before you pass judgment and try to shame her for not being a good mom or not disciplining her children correctly or you don't know and it, it really pisses me off when people do that now oh yeah and i used to be that person so i i can say that i feel yeah. like because i no, I, I totally it. was too and it's it's like sad to admit but like i was so that way too mm -hmm. and it's you never know it's not just the a few hours before that she's probably gone through hell i mean she's probably had the longest week She's not getting any sleep. Yeah. Those things add up. And she's probably just giving up. She's like, whatever. Let the kids scream at this yeah. point. And, and I've it, been there. I've so there. been there. Yeah. And it just, you just, if, if you can take anything from this video, it's just, if a mom is struggling, honestly, the best thing you can do is just be like, you're doing great. Good luck. You know, like, yeah. just give her a little encouragement and just be like, been there you know like anytime i see a new mom or they look stressed i always try to say something i'm yeah. always like you're doing great words dude. of encouragement can mean a yeah, lot yeah even from a stranger someone in a dark place yeah it can mean so much like i feel like me saying something that girl helped her immensely yeah. because she was did not look good you yeah. know and i could tell she was struggling so i was just like you're doing great dude fuck all these people so great. you're doing good and it was just it's just sad. It just I I and that's what the society has come to is like we have all these different generations. Yep. Like completely different generations. Yeah. All meshing oh, yeah. together now. And you know, and it's just like everyone has different views on everything and so you have like the, you know, like baby boomers who think that they should spank your kids and whatever. And I I don't I'm not saying anything's wrong. I'm just no, saying it's just how, how they views, were raised, yeah. you know, like, oh, I got the wooden spoon in the butt, you yep. know, those are those people, and then there's the next generation who got spankings, and then there's the next generation, which, like, it's kind of us, or, like, you know, millennials that are, like, didn't really get spankings anymore, and then there's Gen X's that didn't get anything, yeah. you know, or, like, barely disciplined at all, and so it's, like, and now we're the new set of parents, 
And it's like, They're like, are we allowed to do that? Yeah, like, yeah, are people gonna get mad if we see right. their kids? Or because it was like this whole thing, like in the past few years, it's everyone was shaming anyone who spanked their yeah. kids or did this or that. And so that's your private business, and you discipline your children the way you see fit that you think is the best way to do it. Yeah. As far as as long as you're not hurting them, like, do, I'm not saying that you should just like beat the shit out of your kids. I don't think that that's what I'm trying to get across yeah, please here. Don't do, that. don't do that. I'm not saying that. But like if you choose to to spank your kid if they're sticking a fork in the outlet and they need to spank in spank oh, them. Yeah. Okay? Or if you don't spank your kid and you, you want to put them in the corner, put, put in the corner in a timeout, you do that. That is your business and that's what I hate about this now is social media and everything Puts it all out there. Puts it all out there. Thinks they're allowed to have an opinion. It's not. It's not your business, and that's why, like, I keep that shit to myself. Me and my husband, our parenting is like, and there's even family members who don't agree on some of the things we do, and there's family members who tell us we should discipline our kids more, and there's family members who say putting them in a timeout isn't enough or it's too much, and like, because I just put my kid in the corner in timeout and. I have family members who tell me to, uh, oh, you should just spank him, or oh, oh, you know, you shouldn't put him in timeout. He doesn't understand what timeout is. I have all these people telling me different yep. things. So I just do what I think works. Yep. And timeout works for my kid. Yeah. And that's all I can do right now. And and that's how every mom should feel. And you shouldn't be shamed for doing anything different. And that's that's what this whole video is. Is just letting you know it's okay to not feel okay, and it's not. You're just because you're feeling sad and you don't know who you are anymore that's completely normal and we've both been through it oh, yeah. and it's okay to feel that way you're not a bad mom for that you're not a ba- you're not I mean I don't know how much I can stress that you're not a bad mom for feeling that way yeah I promise it's just it's normal and you should talk to someone maybe talk to your doctor or talk to a friend it's okay to reach out and get help it seriously is okay yeah. Stop mom shaming. That's all this video is. Stop mom shaming. If you can, try to help a mom. Give her words of encouragement. Yeah. We what we're, like she said. What we're getting at is like the mom shaming. It's it's okay to have different opinions and different views, but yours isn't the right one. It's yours, but some other people can have other opinions and other views, and those are okay too. It's okay to have all them. But no one's is the right one. There's and no right we just way. need to support other mothers and their decisions. As long as their children are happy, healthy, and loved, then everything is okay. Yes. You know, it's just, it's a really sad world, world out there sometimes. And we just need to band together as mothers and realize that we are all going through the same things we all have the same trials and tribulations in in some respect they're all very similar and we can love one another and have respect when you see another mom with their kids screaming yeah you know hey i just want you to know like you're doing everything you can do and you're doing amazing yeah you know be be that person. Be that person to say something. Yeah. You don't have to be the one that, that looks the other way and is quiet. Encourage the moms. Yeah. Be open arms for those moms in your life that you know that may have just had a kid or have two toddlers. Be that person that can be the open arms and the yeah. non judgmental mind. It can change lives for those around you. Yeah. And it's, it's so important to to do that because happy moms make happy kids and that's really what it is it all comes back down to the kids we if we all could just support each other and do those simple things it's really just being kind and not passing judgment and letting people know you're not okay and and them not judging you for it then that can make in turn you feel better and make you feel that like as a better mom and act like a better mom and then in turn helps your children and it's and that's what it's all about is just helping each other to help our kids and we just need to do that more and yep. that's what this whole video is and I know it's a long one you guys but I really <laughs> hope it was that, worth it it was so worth yeah, it yeah I hope you watched all the way through we've been talking for a long yeah. time we could go on forever though yeah we really could Enjoyed I'm it. so happy it was good even if the camera wasn't hurt here that was a really good talk just for us as moms yeah for sure so I'm happy we were able to do that yeah it was great Alright guys, that was part two. Which one did you like better, part one or part two?
Let us know down Did below. you listen to the whole thing? If you didn't listen to part one and you're just watching part two, what the hell are you doing? You have to go back and listen to five minutes and 32 seconds. Didn't you hear what was said there? Yeah. Part one. <laughs> go watch it. You gotta let us know if you liked it. Yes. Um, please share. We had so much fun filming this. It was great. It was a great time. Uh, I loved having you here. Thank I you. I love you so much. Thank I would have... love being here. Oh, that was so nice. This is my best friend yeah. in the whole world. I'm so happy we got to talk. Yes. And this was a really important video for us. We just wanted to talk as moms and we wanted you guys to enjoy it. The two-part series is over now and you don't have to watch 45-minute videos with us any longer. <laughs> but if you but guys... We hope you enjoyed it. We do hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> and we hope that if you guys like this kind of stuff that maybe we can do it more often. We're yeah. going to figure out the whole FaceTime recording thing so we can have her on here more, yeah. I promise. But until then, this was nice to have you in person. It was much better in yes. person. So if you guys like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It's free. Just hit, click, 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 click that like button. And uh, subscribe to my channel. It's free. It's free. <laughs> just, just just subscribe. This is Aspen. Go follow her on Instagram. We love you guys. We really gotta go. Um, I hope you enjoyed part two. And please subscribe. Stick around to watch some more of my videos. I will yes. link part one up here if you missed it. I don't know why you would watch part two without watching part one. But here it is if you haven't seen it. We love you guys. Please stick around. I will see you guys in the next video. Mwah.